Chosen Vessels, what's the deal? It's your main man, Drew Tube. I'm back at you again with another video. I need each and every vessel to hit that like button, hit that share button, and don't forget to subscribe, all right? Take it out of God's hands and put it, to, yo, take it out of your hands and put it in God's hands. Give the power to him instead of your situation. All right, there are a lot of things that we go through. And when we're working on things and we're trying to become something or we're trying to do something with our lives, we could tend to put a lot of worry into it. And that gives um, that gives our situation. And I mean, that takes the power away from what we're trying to do. And it gives the power to us worrying about the situation. All right. Um, you want to give as much power to positive things as you can instead of negative things. Because when you give the power to um, a negative situation like worry or fear or thinking that you possibly might not make it with what you're trying to do, it's only going to make matters worse. All right. When you're worried about um, something that you want to be successful at, it takes all the energy that you could be using to be productive and the energy that you could be using to do something the energy that you could be using to work on things, to um, spend time on things, uh, ideas, you know, you don't want to block any uh, ideas coming to you. You don't want to block any of your creative energy. And when you worry about things, you're, you're giving power to a lot of negative forces. And like your, uh, like your positive energy helps you create positive things, that worry energy when you're thinking about things not working, you're seeing it not working in your mind and, and it's causing that to be created as well. And that creates a lot of stress, believe it or not, when you're trying to do something and you're thinking about it not working out and you see it not working out and you feel it not working out. That's a negative cocktail. All right. That's a negative concoction right there. When you see things and you feel things and you're thinking things, it has to be something that you want. It has to be something positive because if not, um, all that energy is going to create uh, what you don't want to experience. And that's what uh, Job meant in the Bible when he said, what I feared has come upon me. All right. When you are thinking that something's not going to work out, you're worried about something not, that's not going to work out. You're fearing something's not going to work out. You feel that it's not going to work out while like picturing that in your mind. That's a, a powerful force right there. You're like, that's the, the power of manifestation. When you see something, when you think something, when you feel something, all right. And when you don't change your mind and it's like you decide it to happen, when you feel that it can happen, you could possibly de end up deciding something that you don't want for yourself. So when it comes to like worrying about situations, you don't want to worry about it. You want to put it in God's hands. So that way you'll be able to have a good outlook on what you want to do instead of a negative outlook on what you want to do because like the more negative things get the more negative your outlook gets you're not going to um want to go through with it you're going to end up procrastinating because that negative energy is still going to be there all right and you could possibly end up giving up all right so when you worry about something too much you can end up procrastinating to the point where you just don't even bother anymore. You're like, why even try? So you want to look at things as positively as you can. You want to have a good outlook on your, your, like what you want to do with your life. So it's, I mean, you want to be able to give it to, you want to take it out of your hands and you want to put it in God's hands. Cause when you put, when you put things in God's hands, it always works out for the better. All right. No matter how bad you think it might work out, no matter how, uh, hard things may be, no matter how difficult things may be, no matter how um, like strange things may seem. It's like you're trying your hardest. It's like things aren't working out. Um, things aren't going your way. You're not feeling like you want to do it. You know, it's like people feel like that. So it's just a part of life. But when you when you take it out of your hands and you put it in God's hands, you're not worrying about it. All right. So when you're not worrying about something, when you're, you're you're not being pessimistic, all right, worry causes you to be a pessimist. And when you're worrying about something, it's going to make it harder for you to go out there and do it. All right. When you're worried about it, you're not going to see yourself being able to carry out the right actions and the proper actions for you to succeed. When you worry about things, you look at things from a, a, a negative point of view. You don't see them working out. All right. So you want to see things working out. 
or you want to have certain phrases. You want to have the phrase that pays. All right, one one phrase that pays is all things work together for those who love God and those who love good and who are called according to his purpose. So when you know something like that and you have a statement like that in your mind, you have an affirmation like that in your mind, it's going to work out for you because thinking negatively about something that you want to do is a it, it's something that people do, but it never works out for you. And it's going to basically like you don't want to drown in that toxicity that you're bringing upon yourself because you, you're anxious, you want it to work out, you know, you can't focus on the now. You can't focus on how you feel right now. Number one, how you feel is not real. When you when you when you are feeling a negative way like worry or fear or something like that, you have to change your thought. And that's what it means when you have to agree when you're with your adversaries when you're in the way with them. That doesn't mean you have to agree with the negative thought. It means you have to just accept that, okay, this is a negative thought and I have to change it. All right. So you have to agree with your adversaries when you're in the way with them. Soon as you're working on something and you start to doubt it, you start to think it's not going to work out. Okay, that feeling is here. It doesn't have to be here. All right. Do I have to let this feeling be here? No. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow myself to think something different. I'm going to change my thought and changing your thought from negative to positive is giving it to God anyway, because you're, you're putting your mind in a a better position. You're putting your mind in a good state. When you put your mind in a good state, that's putting your mind in a godly state. All right. That's putting your mind in a positive state. So worry is not going to help you. All right. Um, put when you, when, when, when you are working on something and you're, you're uh, afraid it may not work out or you start to get negative thoughts, you have to put it in God's hands. All right. Because if not, you may base your, uh, you may, your faith may be based according to appearances or circumstances, and that's never good. All right, if you base your faith according to what you see, then all right, you're not going to become what you want to be. All right, that's another Drew quote. Okay, I, I got them days at a time. All right, if if you base your faith according to what you see, you're not going to be able to come what you want to be. And you have to know that the feelings that you had and the thoughts that you had and the, the feel good energy that you have when you first started is still there. You could take your mind back to that by thinking like, yo, how did it feel when I first started? I know right now I may not feel the best. I know right now I may not feel like doing this. I know right now I may feel tired. I may feel like I'm a little drained or I'm so it's going to allow you to just look at your goals better. And it's going to allow you to just feel better about your life because you like that, that worry is, is very like, it's one of Satan's devices. Like that worry you will, you could possibly destroy yourself with that worry. All right. It stresses you out. It, it, uh, lowers your vibe, it lowers your vibration. It just, it makes you feel like you're at your worst. It, it brings you to like a feeling of being at your lowest when you, when all that you're, you're making that up in your mind when you don't think you can do something or you don't think you could have something, it's, it's just a funk that you're in currently. And it's something that you can get out of. All right. It's just like a, a it's like a, a cell that you've put yourself in momentarily and you have to break out of it. All right. Um, it's, it's, it's not going to serve you to keep holding on to something that's not going to help you. And when you're fearful, when you're, you're worrying, when you're, you're not thinking that you can make it, when you're not thinking that you succeed, that's when you start to to fade away into darkness. All right. You don't want to fade away into darkness. You want to be in the light with your ideas and with your mindset. You want to be able to think positively about what you're trying to do. So in order to do that, you got to let it go and you got to put it in God's hands. All right. Because he's the one that gave you the idea in the first place. God is the one who gave you the idea in the first place. If you're thinking that you can't do something and it's pertaining to what uh, you know that you could have done originally, you definitely want to give it to God. But if you're if it's something that you know he gave you to do, just let it go and give it to him. We stress ourselves out with worry. Like we worry ourselves to death. And it's like, it's no point in worrying yourself to death. It's unnecessary. All right. It's something that you don't have to do. It happens because you want to succeed. You want to be successful. You know, you, you, you don't want to be stuck where you're at. And I understand it's like it, it, it when you worry, and you, when you are like struggling with something, you're you're not thinking about it correctly, all right? And it's like it's just the desperation of wanting to get out of where you're at, 
all right? And I understand how it feels to be in a, a negative, toxic situation around negative, toxic people. You got people hating on you. You got people who don't want to see you succeed. You want to get away from them. You're tired of being around them. You're tired of being around all the negative energy, all right? You might be around a lot of haters, all right? And you're just like, yo, I, I want to be able to use this gift and be able to get away from these people, all right? I want to be able to get out of this environment, get out of this situation and leave, all right? Because they're, the people here, they don't want me to work on my goal. They don't want me to be successful, all right? They, they just rather me just live a normal, average life like them. And it's like, you're not normal and you're not average. So it's like, you couldn't live a normal, average life if you tried. There's a lot of ideas that you get. There's a lot of thinking that you do. There's a lot of work that you put into yourself. And you know that you're going to get somewhere. You just have to calm down and buckle down and, and buck up, Bart. You know, buck up, Bart. But uh, you got to be patient. All right. You have to be patient. That was wild when I made that video about the buck. And then a buck came, you know, look at God. A buck came right on by. When I was, as soon as I said buck up, that buck shot up out of nowhere. That deer with them big old antlers came up out of nowhere. And that's the first time I saw one like that. And I was just like, I was just astonished. I was like, wow. But you have to be astonished with yourself just like that. All right. When, when you let go and you take it out of your hands and you put it in God's hands, you're saving your life. You're saving your dream. You're saving, you're, you're putting ages back. You're putting years back on your life. All right. You're putting time back on your life because it's, it's all that unnecessary stress. It's just, it's, it's, it's unworthy of you. You're not worthy of all that stress. All right. You're worthy of peace you're worthy of a, a sound mind. And that's what God gave you. He gave you the spirit of courage, the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind. So you have no business being worried over something that he gave you to do in the first place. Who gave you that dream? Who gave you that goal? You have to remind yourself that. And when you remind yourself that, wait a minute, I got this from God in the first place. It's no way that I can be stopped. There's no way that I cannot be successful only if I stop myself with my own stinking thinking and my own negative thoughts. All right. You're, you're, when you have negative thoughts about something that you want to do, you have to change the thought. Agree with your adversaries when you're in the way with them. You could do, and, and you could do this with people. If it's a negative person and they're tripping you up, you could agree with your adversary while you're in the way with it. Okay. This person is toxic, but Hey, I don't have to let them affect me. But while we're talking about uh, goals and dreams and things, you want to, you don't want the worry to, you don't want to replace your belief in yourself and your ability to do something with worry. And when you worry and you worry and you worry, that's what you're doing. When you, when you start to fall back and backslide into a negative mindset from worry or from fear that something's not going to work out, you're placing yourself in a, a toxic mindset and you're, you're uh, placing yourself basically somewhere that you're not supposed to be mentally. You're putting yourself in hell and you're taking yourself out of heaven. And it's like, you don't have to be in hell. All right. You could, you don't have to necessarily put yourself there. All right. That, that worry is just going to, uh, it's just going to stress you out and it could cause, it could even cause health issues. All right. You don't want to cause yourself any type of problems. All right. That, that worry, it, it, you know, it will cause you to like, it could cause people to have a nervous breakdown. It could cause you to have a mental breakdown. And when you put things in God's hands, none of that happens. And it's like, you know, you want to be successful. And the only reason why you're worried is because things aren't working out how you want them to at this particular moment. But just because it doesn't seem like you're winning, it doesn't mean you're not winning. All right. You have to start looking at a, a failure as a try. Like, don't see it as a failure. Look at it like, yo, I tried and I'm not going to give up and I'm going to keep trying. And when you don't give up and you keep trying, that's how people get to where they want to go. People who try things and people who want to be successful, they don't usually get it the first or second time. They have like when people put toys out, when people put shoes out, you know how many different shoes uh, Louis Vuitton makes before they get the one that wins? You know how many shoes Yeezy had to put out or had to create? not put out, but you know what I'm saying? You know how many prototypes he had to make before he had the one? You have to keep going until you get the one that you want. It's a part of it. It may turn out ugly. It may turn out bad. It may, you may make mistakes. All right. Things may not go your way with what you're trying to do. But when the, the more you do, the better you'll get. The more you practice, the, the more better things will be. All right. The pra practice will uh, help you become better at what you're doing. 
All right. So you'll, you'll get more of a grip on what you're doing. And when you put things in God's hands, you don't stress out to the point where you want to give up. All right. Even if you have to put it down, when you have to put your dream down because you've been trying and trying and trying and the ideas aren't coming, the, uh, it's not turning out right. You're painting and the painting's not painting. You're, you're working on some music and it's like you ain't making nothing but, but, but beats this week. All right. Just put it down, put it in God's hands and you can come back to it. When you come back to it, isn't it always better when you put things down and you don't quit and you don't give up? Isn't it always better? You have that you have that feeling of not giving up. So you got the energy from not giving up and you could you can go back and work on things and you're more powerful than you than you were when you were uh, stressing over it. And it's, it's just how it works. It's just a process of trying to do something and trying to be something you you, you have a process of success you have a process of failure you have your wins you have your losses you have your success you have your failure it's just a part of it but you you can't get so caught up in the success part that when you fail you you just throw you just ready to to just give up you're just ready to throw in the towel all right you can't do that when 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 you put things in God's hands when you throw in the towel he'll throw the towel right back at you what you think you're doing that like that's why it's good to put things in God's hands. He'll throw the towel back at you. Oh, okay. You're not giving up on me. God will be right there. So it's like put it in his hands and don't worry. All right. Don't worry about it. All right. Don't stress yourself out over things that you don't need to be stressed out about. And there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. You will become successful. If you, if you have it in your mind and you have it in your spirit that God wants you to be successful, you'll be successful. It's just... You have to endure the process and you have to enjoy the process. You have to enjoy the ride. All right. Some people don't enjoy the ride. They just want to hurry up and rush to success. I was looking at this like, you know, people watched me so much at this one job. It was like this little saying. It said, enjoy the ride. I just stopped and looked at it and I was like, enjoy the ride. I said, you know what? That's a And I just accepted that philosophy. The next day it was gone. They moved it. <laughs> they, it was about four, it was like it was so many of them. They just moved it. They, they moved it someplace else. All right. To where I just had to go over there and look at it there. So I was like, it's the same thing. It's like, yo, sometimes you, you, when you, and this is a perfect example. Sometimes when you're seeing things the wrong way, you're looking at it from the wrong angle. Sometimes you have to reposition yourself, which could be a break, some time off. Sometimes you got to take a break. What's like, what's wrong with taking a break? When you when you're working on something that you you want to do well at, you're working on something that you want to do good at. There's nothing wrong with taking a break. You take a break, you come back, you're able to look at things differently, right? Like that's what's always helped me with certain things that I was working on. Like I may not be seeing, I may not be looking at it the best right here and right now, but when I took a break and I come back and I look at it later, I'll be able to see it a different way to where. I'll be able to either see what I could fix or I'll see what I did good. Like sometimes you'll have something good, but it, it won't be complete or you like you're so you've been working on it so long. You need to take a break and you think it's not good, but you come back to it. You hear it. You're like, yo, this is actually all right. I could use this. So you have to just relax and don't put too much pressure on yourself. All right. Just because you, you're great. You want to be greater. You want to be successful. Doesn't mean you have to put a lot of pressure on yourself. All right. It should be easy. All right. When you're starting to put pressure on yourself in a negative way, that means you might, you know, just have to put it in God's hands, take a break, chill for a little bit and then come back to it. All right. You're supposed to put pressure on yourself because you want to, you know, do good, but it's not the amount of pressure that makes you worry. Or it's not the type of pressure that is going to like cause you to fail because you're so worried and so caught up on trying to get everything right. Sometimes you just have to try things out. Don't worry about trying to get things right so much. All right. When you when you just do something and you just go go through the motions of it and get it done and not worrying about trying to make it perfect. After doing that a couple times, failing a couple times, succeeding a couple times, you'll find your flow. You'll find your uh, your rhythm with things. And then you'll just be, it'll just come to you. You'll have some still that are good. You'll have some that aren't as good. You'll have some that are bad, maybe some that suck, maybe some that are even terrible, but you, you can learn from all of them. And yo, what's, what's really crazy is some of the, some of the things that you do that are going to be terrible to you, other people are going to think it's the best thing since sliced bread. I done, I done witnessed it with my own eyes. I'm like, yo, that's the one y'all like. 
y'all don't and it's like the one that you thought was like all that and a, a, a slice of like a slice of bread with some butter on top it, it, they didn't they weren't feeling it like that <laughs> it's, it's that's just how it works sometimes sometimes when you work on something and you do something what you feel is going to be real to everybody else they're going to be able to feel it too like yo that's the one i like that and then other times the one you think that's it they're going to be like yo that ain't it but the one that you think is like trash they're going to be like yo this is it like Kanye West said that about a lot of his beats. He said he would make beats to where the one he thought was great flopped. And the one that he almost threw out and deleted was the one that everybody needed. Don't give up, all right? And it's just, it, you never know how things are going to go. So like, why stress over things? And, and, and it's always going to work out for you anyway. That's another thing we have to keep in mind. It's just, you, you can't be so caught up on success that you forget the fundamentals, all right? You forget to just chill. You forget to know that everything's going to be all right. You forget to know that you're going to make it regardless, whether you have a good one, whether you have a bad one, all right? And you're going to make it regardless. If you're meant to do it, you're meant to be, that is going to happen. And especially if you know it's one of your God-given talents and gifts, you know you're going to be successful at it. So don't be hard on yourself. It's just that you, you want to do well. You want to be great. But you have to learn how to just go with the flow. You have to learn how to just enjoy the ride. All right, That way you won't stress yourself out when it feels or looks like things aren't going your way. What you feel is not real. And what you perceive is not what you should believe sometimes. All right? If your perception isn't um if your perception is not pointing you in the right direction don't believe it you might you might be uh you might be not feeling uh your best that day all right you but you still got to do it anyway all right even though even when you're not feeling your best you still got to get up and go do it anyway but you may be looking at things from a negative point of view all right so it's all good it's all good baby baby you're gonna make it regardless you want to be successful regardless, put things in God's hands and yo, he'll guide you. All right. Yo, God will guide you to where, to what you need to do. All right. And that's, yo, that's, that's one of the greatest thing about putting it in God's hands when you can't see it, when you can't do it, or when you're not sure which way to go, ask God to guide you, ask the angels to show you what you're not seeing. All right. Ask God to point out, you know, what you may be looking over, what you, what you may have missed. And that way you'll be able to see it. All right. Things always work out for you when you put things in God's hands. It eliminates worry. It eliminates stress. Yo, it adds years on to your life. People will be worried about their job. People will be worried about their finances. People will be worried about their kids, their family. And those are natural things to worry about. But you don't want to get consumed by that worry. If you feel yourself being consumed by worry, you're, 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 you're not putting it, you're not giving it to, to uh, God and things like that. And like you don't have to worry about your money. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat. You don't have to worry about the clothes you're going to wear or how you're going to get to here from there or here to there. You don't have to worry about any of those things. You don't. When you when you start to worry about those things, you're worrying for absolutely no reason. When you start to worry about things that God provides, all right, you're forgetting the fundamentals. Another fundamental, God will provide. It's nothing to worry about. Look at the birds. Do you see the birds worried about where they're going to find seeds or or uh, uh, little limbs from trees for their nest and things like that? They're not worried about that. They know they're going to be taken care of. How are we different from the birds? I always remember that. I always held near and dear to that. All right. I may not know as much as I should know or everything in the book, but yo, how are we different than the birds? It's just like little things that stuck out to me that was in the Bible and they always just helped me and just helped me stay grounded and stay focused. It's like, how are we different than the birds? The birds are always taken care of. They always find food. They always can make a nest. Well, even if it's not a tree limb, I done seen them take uh, trash and make a nest out of it. I add little pieces of paper and stuff like that. Little uh, pieces of this and pieces of that. They'll uh, put, put that around the twigs and things. So it's like, and that's that, yo, that's nature being creative. So sometimes when you don't have the right things that you need, when you don't give up and you, you keep your faith, God will show you some ways to be creative and, and find some other ways about making some things happen and using, using, um, using some of your skills in a way you never imagined. So it's like, it's, it's nothing to worry about. We get caught up in worry because we don't want to be seen this way, or we don't want to be seen without, or we don't want to be seen lacking to hell with what people think. 
All right. D don't worry about how people see you and what would don't worry about how people see you or perceive you when it comes to what you're trying to do with your life. If you're working towards something great and something positive for yourself, don't worry about that. All right. Because that is something that can start to make you compare your life to other people. Well, they're doing what they're doing and they're able to get a car. They're doing what they're doing and they're able to live in a house. They're able to take care of this. They're able to provide that way. You have to be patient, all right? And you can't give up. There's plenty of people that came before you that didn't have everything they needed and they didn't let that stop them. Just because you don't have what you need doesn't mean you're not going to ever get it. You got to stay down until you get up. You're doing something positive for your life and you're going to have to go through uh, the motions of that. You're going to have to enjoy the ride. All right. So, yo, and that's another thing you have to be, con you have to be, um, you have, to, what's the word? You have to have gratitude. You got to be content with what you have. All right. You have, you don't stay content, but you have to be content for what you have and where you're at. And, and you have to use that to allow you to stay, um, they, now they say don't get complacent, I think they say, but um, you have to stay content because that's going to lead you to being grateful. That's going to lead you to gratitude. Be grateful for your level of skill. Be, gr and that, you know, be grateful for your level of skill and be grateful for what you can do because it's like when you, when you practice gratitude for what you can do and where you're at and what you're capable of already right here, right now, it's like God will use that to open up a door for you in the universe to let more skill in, to let more success in, to let more greatness in. So practice gratitude, baby. You practice that gratitude, it's gonna basically it's like a it's it's like an elevator, and you step in, and you you trying to go up a level, and you go up to the, the you trying to get to the second floor, you end up at the fifth floor. You like, oh wow, okay. Look at God. All right, so just practice gratitude. Be grateful for where you're at. You 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 don't look at what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Maybe you're supposed to be doing something different. You may be in the same genre, you may be in the same lane, you may be playing the same game, but maybe you're going to be able to do something different with what you have. Just because somebody else is ahead of you or doing better things, number one, they probably had, they might have had an earlier start than you. So don't worry about that. What like we are, the mind will have you worried about things you ain't even got, you ain't even got no control over. If you don't have no control over, don't let it bother you. People may have started ahead of you. Their gift may be different than yours, and it, but it doesn't mean you're not going to get there. It doesn't mean that your gift has any less value. Somebody may be killing it right now. When you see somebody killing it, thank them. All right. When you see somebody killing it, bless them. Yo, God bless them. God bless their gift. God bless their talent. God bless everything they, that they can do. God bless the level that they're on. God bless where they're going. All right. Because that will keep you from comparing yourself to other people. That will keep you from being a hater. All right. Because everybody got a little bit of hate in them. Everybody got a little bit of demons in them. You just got to fight them. And you have you got to fight them so that way you don't invite them. And how you fight them is you don't allow these things to make you worry. The debt, like your mind will play tricks on you and you'll see people who are ahead of you. You'll see people who are, are doing better than you. And you'll start to think that, you know what, I can't do this or I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You were born to be great as well. You were born to be great too. You were born to have just as much as them or more. All right. And you were, you were born to do just as great as them or greater. How do you know you're not going to be greater than them? Just, just because you have a, a later start doesn't mean that you won't have a greater start. Just because you have a later start doesn't mean you might not have a greater start. All right, your start just might be as great as theirs or greater. You never know. So and that's you know that's why you got to stay positive. People who are pessimistic have a greater chance of getting to where they want to get in life and making it to a, a better place in life than people who are pessimistic. You have to look on the bright side, no matter how many people make fun of it, no matter how many people take an ish on it, no matter how many people try to say that's some some lame stuff. It's probably lame because if, when they, if they were to look on the bright side, they'd have to get up and go do something with their life. You know, so a lot of people are negative and toxic because if they if they're not, it's going to change the way they look at things and they don't want to try. They don't want to do anything. So keep your positive outlook on life. Don't be a pessimist. A pessimist is just a pest, all right? A pessimist is just a pest going around with a negative vibe thinking that they can't do anything and the people around them, they kind of take on that spirit. It rubs off on them. You want to be an optimistic person, all right? That's why 
some people you don't really get along with like that because you have a, a optimistic outlook on life. You see the glass half full. You're, that's that's gratitude. That's being grateful. Oh man, this glass is half full. At least at least you have something to drink. <laughs> you know, at, at least you have something to drink. That's like somebody being in the desert, about to die of thirst, and they're like, man, this glass is half, this glass is half full, and they're waiting for the helicopter to come. This glass half full. It's like you stranded somewhere, and that's all you got. You better be grateful for that. Imagine if imagine if you didn't have that, you wouldn't survive. You wouldn't be able to get anywhere. So be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for what you got. That will stop you from worrying. So whatever, whenever you're worrying about something, when you practice gratitude, that's another form of putting it in God's hands. When you're stressed about something, when you, when you don't think things are going to work out, practice some gratitude. You know what? I didn't reach the level I wanted to, but I'm grateful for where I'm at. I don't know how things are going to turn out. I'm grateful that I woke up this morning. I'm grateful that I have this job. I'm grateful that I uh, have this gift. I'm, gr I, I'm grateful that I have this car. I know I got to take it to the shop. I know I don't know where the money's going to come from, but you know what? I'm grateful I got this car. I don't have enough money to pay for this part, but I'm grateful I have some money. You know what? I don't have everything that I need, but I'm grateful for what I have. And that door will... Blessing to come right on through. You won't even know where it came from. It's, uh, 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 slap you right in the face. It'll fall right on your doormat. It hit. It, 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 it hits you right on your feet. You'll, you'll trip over it. It is. It has seemed like it fall fell right out the sky. All right, you'll you'll be walking and stumble right over it. Like whoa, blessing. When you practice gratitude for things, it alleviates stress. All right, it keeps you grounded. It keeps you centered. Keeps you level headed. Keeps you knowing that things are going to work out for you. Who doesn't want to stay in the mindset of yo everything works out for me? And just because it may not look like it, don't get caught up in that. Don't base your faith according to appearances, all right? This matrix will fool you into thinking that you can't get what you are worthy of or what you deserve. You got to push that to the side. You're worthy of that and then some. It's you know, according to your belief, so be it unto you. People get caught up in what they see and, and what's going on and, and what they don't have, and they downward spiral. If you allow yourself to downward spiral, then you're going to create those negative images. You're going to create the things that you don't want because that, that decide power, that feeling power, that thinking power, that speaking power, right? That seeing power, that's a, that's, a, that's a very strong, very strong combination right there. That is the, that is the method that people manifest with. They see it, they feel it. They believe it, they decide it, they think it, maybe not in that order, but yo, those are the, those are the five things to, to manifest things in your life, to think it, see it, feel it, decide it, believe it. You may want to write that down, you may want to write that down, think it, believe, yo, uh, think it, see, yo, see it, feel it, think it, believe it, decide it, or decide it, believe it, y'all don't got the order right, y'all, but yo, that's the method to the madness when you, when you, um, when you think like that, when you decide things, when you see things, when you feel things, when you believe things, that is a powerful energy right there. It's like you're, you're opening up a door to the universe for your uh, your blessings to come on in. That's you. That's a form of prayer, and that's using the power of God. That's that's that is allowing you to use the power of God in you through the power of your subconscious mind. It's like you, it, those are the keys to to the universe, and you're just like unlocking the door and you're pulling something that you want off the shelf you're like you know what god i want this command you me that's in the bible command you me people be like god please god i need you to do this for me no command you me god give me that give me that you know get go get get on your chris brown when it comes to god get on get on your chris brown when it comes to the lord because like yo he says command you me command you me you, you tell God what you want him to do for you and he'll do it according to your belief. So be it unto you. People be like, oh, well, you know, I just I'll be happy with half of it or, you know, uh, I, I'll just be happy with, you know, let me let me get three percent of it or, you know, just a little bit. God, I, I you know, just I, I'll be cool with just a little bit, you know, just just help me with the bare necessities. And then when you get the bare necessities and, and you end up realizing that you need more, you'd be like, damn, I should ask for more. Yeah, you should have. 
because command you me. You you tell God what you want him to do. All right. You tell him the blessings that you want him to do. You tell him the life that you want to live. All right. And he'll help you create it. All right. Through, through you. All right. He only put you here to experience your life through you. What do you think you're here for? You're here to for God to experience the dreams and the goals and the mission and the ups, the downs and, and turning, it, turning it all around for his greater good. That's for you. He, he wants to experience that through you. All right. When you're driving in that new car and you're feeling like a star, he wants to experience that through you. All right. When you're living in that new home, that mansion, because you were able to buy it because you didn't give up. He wants to experience that through you closing that deal when you when you're on your on your first uh, house that you sold because you want to be a realtor. He wants to experience that through you. That first open heart surgery because you don't uh, studied up on Dr. Charles Drew and you want to become a, a, a surgeon. He wants to experience that through you. All right. You, maybe you want to be a dentist. He wants to experience that through you. All right. Maybe you want to uh, maybe you want to uh, be a submarine diver. He wants to experience that through you. Whatever, whatever dream you have, God wants to experience that through you. All right. Whatever you see in your mind's eye, yourself doing, you got to believe it. All right. Because he wants to experience that through you. So it's nothing to worry about. God wants you to do these things. He wants you to have these things. You're going to get it. All you have to do is have the right mindset and and not putting it in God's hands ain't it. All right. When, when, and when, yo, the beautiful thing is when you put it out of God's hands, you're really putting it back in your hands. Because he has, he has, he's using your hands to create it and make it happen in you, through you, with you. All right. Y'all, y'all want to see me smile. I'm smiling for y'all. All right. So, um, you know, it, it's nothing to worry about if you're worried, like, yo, know, even down to health, yo, know, God wants to experience a healthy you. Even down to your wealth, he wants to experience a wealthy you. It's nothing to worry about. Don't worry about your health. Don't worry about your wealth. Don't worry about those things. Our healing first starts in the mind. It first starts in your spirit. All right. So you got to you have to know that things can happen. And that's faith. Faith is in knowing. All right. Faith is in hearing. Faith is in knowing. Our faith is in seeing. That's why they say seeing is believing. People got that sh stuff twisted. Oh my God, yo, look at God, man. Seeing is believing. It's not talking about seeing with your carnal eyes. It's talking about seeing with your spiritual eye. Seeing is believing. You have to see it with your spiritual eye first and then believe it and then decide it. All right? I, th I think that's enough for this video, all right? Seeing is believing. Make sure you see it with your mind's eye, all right? I'll see you in the next video. Peace, love, and light. Stop all that worrying. All right. I'll see you in the next video. It's already happened. It's already written in stone. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Peace, love, and light. We out.